want you to obey my commands, but most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. Miguel Cotto steps out and throws three or four fast punches as if he wants to start fast. Cotto so confident in his jab now after what he accomplished in two fights last year at blocking shots upstairs with his gloves. Yeah. A little bit unusually confident, a little bit arrogant and cocky even in this fight. Well, he says that mentally, Emmanuel, beating Shane Mosley has taken him to another level. And he can beat anybody. If he can beat somebody like Mosley and above the nose from the accuracy of Cotto's early assault in Miguel Cotto's right hand. Everything. But his jab is seeming to be the most effective punch so far as the fighters move on. Gomez to the punch more often than not. The quickness of the fighters. Stressing that after what he went through on the contender and having beaten Gaddy here and having beaten Bentaki against any opponent. And there's a good left hand by Gomez that Gomez is picking him off and catching him on the side. But and he's been surprisingly effective with it, particularly against Zab Judah. And he wobbles Gomez with a left hook to the body. The trademark punch of Miguel Cotto that Cotto was able to demonstrate. Good body shot with the right hand this time by Cotto. You've got to counter with your own jab as soon as he throws it. Him up, him up. Primarily because the edited highlights in those shows showed him brawling, but he really has skills. He's really a boxer puncher. And getting moved by the punches yeah, with which he's hit. I was going to say, so far apart, that he has, has very bad balance, and so it's easy for him to get knocked off balance, so to say, because his legs are so far apart. Look at the marks already on Gomez's face. He's had a lot of punches. Most effective, that hard, stiff left jab, though, that he's landing. I think he just nice. feels really comfortable in this fight. He just seems to be very relaxed and just having fun out there. I've never saw him so... And Cotto's treating this like a sparring session, Emmanuel. Knocking out boxes. So that will be a candidate for fight of the year. That's going to be a rough fight because, you know, one thing we know, Cotto does get hurt. So, and he, but the one thing, he gets up and he fights. But the bottom line is, with as much leather as Cotto has landed so far, you're hard-pressed not to call it a knockdown. Yeah, it didn't look like a clean punch at all that he was off balance that Cotto got credit for a knockdown without landing his punch. But I saw Mike Tyson get credit for a knockout against Carl The Truth Williams without ever landing a punch. Here you see Cotto lands the right hand, and then he throws the left hand and misses, but just because of the feet getting entangled and probably the fact that... And, of course, that is a questionable knockdown. Yeah, still hasn't been down from contact, but he has absorbed a lot of punishments in the first two rounds against Miguel Cotto. Because if he lands one of those right hands... Gomez is not considered a puncher. It's probably one of the reasons he's so comfortable doing that. Cotto's arrogance is continuing to flow. Good right hand inside by Gomez, countering. Right hand lands for Cotto. Back to the southpaw stance. Lands a straight left hand. Back to the regular stance. Gomez lands a right hand, but... Alfonso got in the left hook to the body, too. But look at that combination. He hit it Gomez any time he wants it. He punches to the inside. If you notice, Gomez keeps his right hand on the side of his face. He's fallen in love a little bit with the idea of doing more boxing since the Mosley fight. Huh. Gomez keeps his hands on the side so much, he changed up and brought it right up through the center. The most painful punch you can receive is a punch to the solar plexus. Have been body shots despite a lot of heavy leather landed upstairs. Three to nothing, Miguel Cotto. This round as though he wanted to test just how hurt Gomez is and whether he can get him out of here. Had never been knocked down and has never been knocked out in his professional career. 10, 12, 15 pounds bigger than him. He's, and he's won 14, or he has uh, has, a, has lost just once in his last 15 fights. He would be a decent fighter against a lot of good fighters. Well, this is reminiscent of what Cotto did to Carlos Quintana here in Atlantic City. A guy who beat 
an outstanding young puncher from South America named Joel Julio. And Cotto annihilated him with body shots. You think Cintron could fight? So much excitement in the top echelon of the runway division. Especially right now, looking at the fight. Rifle compared to somebody with a real big, powerful shotgun. It just, he doesn't have the power to stand in and trade with Joel Cotto. No, is Gomez he, showing too much courage, Emmanuel, or, yes. is, or does he have no choice? Because he's not the type of guy. To he's getting hurt him. badly. This is the kind of stuff that affects your career. Yeah. Athletic Commission, we're here tonight. If he might not have already stopped this fight, from some fighters might not be enough to seriously damage him. I mean that, you know, keep his eyes open, and if he, he decides to stop it, he would justify it. Well, it's very wise of Wald, who sometimes oversells his fighters. To the body. An unwise tack to take. Down goes Gomez for the third time in the fight. Well, it wasn't a big shot that knocked him down. But when Gomez, who's not a puncher, is taking this type of a beating. So it's going to be hard for him to turn the fight around with one single punch. Gomez's rationale for how he would beat Cotto was, well, we've all seen that Miguel has a weak chin. Those mishaps took place when Cotto was... And now Randy Newman officially acknowledges that it's over. I just want to say that when Art Aragon was told by a referee that he made up to stop the fight if something didn't happen, he responded, what's holding you back? De Caguas, Puerto Rico, Miguel Ángel, Cor